Father, speak to us, O Lord. We we'll praise your name. We we'll say hallelujah to your name. You are so good. You are so nice. You are so wonderful. You are so glorious. Lord, unveil the truth of your word unto us. Refresh our memory again. Help your children all over the world who are going to come across your message one of these days. The Lord God Almighty, they will respond to your word. And we also that are in the church hearing this word, the Lord God Almighty will not be cast away on the last day. Because we are not just here, Lord, we shall be doers of your words. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Lord God Almighty, the grace to make your kingdom. The grace to change our values in order to make your kingdom. Grant us that grace today. And all the days of our life, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget we are talking about check your values. Check your values. That's what we have been discussing about. And we have been looking, uh, we have looked into the book of Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter, chapter 5. Uh, and the time permits us pass, we run it up today. Check your values. What are those things that you value most in your life? What are those things that are part of your life? You, you, you live. You live. I mean, they are part of the things you live. You enjoy doing. You take pleasure in. I mean, when you do it, you don't feel any remorse. When you do it, you don't feel any... Uh, the, 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 your conscience does not prick you. Why? Because... You are smeared or killed that conscience. You know, we're talking of values. We're talking of some, some values. We are, we, are, we, are, we are talking about some negative values now that made you who you are. Negative values, I mean negative, negative, bad values that made you who you are. As a child of God, some of us that called ourselves Christians, we still display these bad, old, negative values. But the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, your value must change. And we are looking into Ephesians chapter 5 and from verse 1. Verse 1, as I read last week, I said that for your value to change, you need to imitate God. You need to imitate God. And the next one I want to look about is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. The Bible says, you need to walk in love. You need to walk in love. You need to walk in love. Live a lifestyle of love. You must love, the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, love your neighbor as yourself. And Paul mentioned another important thing, that you may have the old gifts. You may prophesy, you may pray for the dead and they will rise up from the, they will rise up from the, from, uh, from the dead. From death. You, may, you may pray for the, for the lame and they may walk. You may speak in tongues and many things will happen. You may say, song stand still and the song will stand still. You may say, moo, don't go down and the moo will not go down. You may say, rain, come down, the rain will come down. You say, you may bring snow in times of summer. You may have this mighty gift from God, but if you don't have love, you are nothing before the living God. And if you still carry about some bad values, you are not in the sight of God. Now, somebody will be asking me, uh -uh, how can somebody who is carrying bad values be performing all these miracles? Yes, yeah, it's possible because God can use anybody. God, we are all vessels in God's hand. He desires. He can use anybody at any time. The fact that you are doing miracles today, the fact that you have signs and wonders accompanying your ministry, does not mean you will make the kingdom of God. Those are not the signs to show that you will make the kingdom of God. You need to live in love. You need to display love. To the fullest, First Corinthians chapter 13, you can read it there and see what Paul said about the gospel or the message, I will say, of love. The message of love in First Corinthians chapter 13. And towards the end of chapter 13, look at what he said, 13, 13. 
and now abided faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. So you may have everything, every other spiritual gift, but if you don't have love, you are nothing. Do you know some of us picked the value of eight red? We picked eight red. We picked eight red. When we were very young, you just ate people for nothing. Anybody that offends you, you ate. Some of us, our lives have been choked with hatred. And you still come to the church, you look at the pastor, you hate the pastor. You look at this person sitting by your right, you hate the person. You look at the person by your left, you hate the person. All hatred all around you. You need to replace such hatred with, with, with um, love. That is how your values can change. Yes, they can change if you are determined to do what? To change them. If you are determined to change them. And not only that, I'm trying to jump now. If you look at um, the book of, uh, I mean, still, uh, we're still looking at the book of um, uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Look at, look at verse, verse 11. Verse 11 says, as, as I said, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them. You have to drop things of darkness. Anything that is connecting you are doing, and that thing is connecting you with the devil. That thing is connecting you with the things of the devil. And you know that, uh, or let me put it in a, in a mild way, that thing is connecting you to sin. You know that this thing is bad. Even in your natural mind, when you sit, think, when you sit, I mean, sit, sit, sit back, and you think about it, you know that this thing I am doing is bad. My friends, my friends, listen to me. There is nobody on this planet Earth. Nobody on this planet Earth that will tell you or me. When he or she is doing any bad thing to say, I don't know it is bad. I mean, I'm talking to, I'm not talking of a child. I'm talking of a child. I'm talking of, even as a child who now knows what is good and evil. And when that child is doing something that is bad, and you ask the child, this thing you do, is it good? They will tell you it's wrong. But it is anyway. Talk less of you and adult. So anything you are doing and you know it is sin, is it envy? Is it malice? You picked up. Don't forget, your values are things you grew up with. But they can change even though you have matured. Even though you, are, you have grown up. Even though they have been part of you for life. They can change and they must change. Why must they change? Because you want to make heaven. Bad values will prevent you from making heaven. So you need to drop everything of that day. So whatever you are doing, sit back and think about it. This thing I am doing, is it right in the sight of God? Certainly you will get the answer. You will know that what I'm doing is not good. Do you know some of this? So most people know. But they put that, they put that among. The few that I don't know is wrong, they are lying. They are lying. And forget, forget about it. I mean, or, or don't forget about it. Liars are in the camp of the devil. Liars are in the camp of the devil. So we need to drop every form of darkness, everything connected to darkness. If you look at it from verse three, from verse three to to five, you see what Paul was trying to say there. That it may, um, I mean, so, uh, 3 to 5 says, But fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming sin, neither feeding it, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this year know that no one among that unclean person, nor covetous man, which an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. People that are involved in this, listen, Paul is saying, Paul is saying, for this year, know that no one monger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ or of God. If those values, if those values in you are having, if they do not change, or if you do not change them, you not willingly submit your heart to God to change them, you have no part in the kingdom 
of God. If the values you are having, the values who, that I mean, values that are not in line with the will of God, values that are connected to darkness, that are connected to sin, if they do not change in you, or if you do not change them, you have no part in the kingdom of God. You have no part in the kingdom of God. Brethren, not only that, the Bible said, the Bible said in verse 8, it says, because why your values must change, is because in verse 8, Ephesians 5, verse 8, it said, For ye were sometimes darkness, for now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. For your values to change, you need to do what? Walk as children of light or live as light. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Your light must shine. You must not show forth darkness. Things of darkness must go. What do we enjoy in doing the things of darkness? Let me read on. And the Bible said again in verse 18, you see I'm jumping them. We're actually reading Ephesians chapter 5, 1 to 21. But I'm just taking some few verses because of our time. But the thing says, be not drunk with wine, wearing in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. If you say you have accepted Jesus Christ, yes, you have the Spirit of God. But do you listen to the voice of the Spirit of God? If you don't listen to the voice of the Spirit of God, there's no way you can be filled with the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God is telling you not to do this, not to do that, and you continue to disobey, then you cannot be filled with by the Spirit. You also, you need to be filled with the Spirit and not get yourself getting drunk and you say you are a child of God. It does not way, it does not work that way. And the Bible said in verse 19, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Instead of you nursing evil things in your mind, let your mind be that which will be what? Which will bring forth good things. Let good things be coming out from your mind. Heart. Let your heart rejoice in good things. Whatever that comes from you, try to fill your heart with praises to God. Drop all those evil things that are there in the heart. Those evil mindset. Don't allow them to control you. Do not give the devil a foothold in your heart. When, when evil thoughts are coming, Canter them in the name of Jesus. Sing spiritual song to the glory of God. If you are you, if you are fond of having evil thoughts, if you are fond of thinking evil about your neighbor, you need to pray to God and say, God, please help me this day. And when you say, God, I, I don't want to think evil concerning my brother, concerning my sister, concerning my neighbor. I want to, I want to have good intention. I want to have good mind for them. And anytime you see that that evil mind is come, just sing, sing, sing psalms, sing praises to God and say, I'm buying that speed of mind and try to occupy your, your mind with the things of the living God. You see, the Bible, verse 20 says, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, you must learn to do what? To thank God. Thank God always. Thank God always for your life. Don't, don't, don't. Try to uh, don't try to measure your life with with others. You see, sometimes what makes us to to have envy, what makes us to have malice, what makes us to hate people is when you start measuring your life with others. When you see that it seems all others are ten, ten steps ahead of you, and so you don't like they don't want to. No, 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 no. Learn to give God thanks for whatever God has provided for you, whatever God has given to you. Learn to do what. To give him thanks. Learn to do what? To give him thanks. It's very, very important. Giving thanks always 
for all things. And verse 21 says, Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Learn to submit to authorities. Learn to submit to others. No matter who they are. You may be greater than them. But learn to submit yourself to them. Submitting yourself to them does not mean you should, you should lie down so that they will put their leg on your head. That's not what it means. Submitting yourself to one another. Trying to do what? Trying to do what? To listen to yourself. Try to discuss. Try to solve anything you are not happy with. You understand? Try to discuss it. You don't, you don't want... You, you don't, I, I would like to put it now. There are some people that accept you take their own. They won't accept it. No. Sometimes your own, you need to drop your own. You need to submit. Do my own. That do my own. No, 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 no. You need to submit your own sometimes and try to do the one of what? Of the other. Let there be that agreement in marriage as, as, as married couples. Submitting yourself to one another. Not that it is whatever I have said, that is what you will do. No. Sometimes you need to submit yours to your wife. And your wife, you need to submit yours to your husband. And as children of God, our brothers and sisters in the church, we need to submit one to another. That's what the Bible is saying. Because they are, they are, the, 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 the value you carry is that Nobody rides on you, as I said last week. Nobody rides on you. And if you say, nobody can ride on me, then you are automatically saying you want to ride on others. But as I said last week, if you are put to ride on you by you submitting to them, you are heading towards heaven. But if you want to ride on others so that they will submit themselves to you, but you don't want to submit to them, then you are riding yourself. To the kingdom of darkness. I pray that will not be my our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So, children of God, check your values. Change them. Anyone that does not give glory to God in your life must change. The reason is why they must change? Because you want to make God's kingdom. Do not allow the devil to deceive you. Do not allow the devil to deceive you. Let me read one part finally that I jumped, I skipped. In that book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me read one part. Look at verse 6. It says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. If you're going to disobey the word of God, the wrath of God will be upon you. Don't be deceived. All what I'm saying, all these bad values, are what is making God unhappy with many today. And that's what is making God to look at the church and weep. God is weeping. Jesus is weeping. Because the church is not what it used to be. People have turned the church upside down today. Why not join the wagon of those who are heading towards heaven? Who will do the right thing? Who will not be deceived by vain words? But who will take serious what the Bible is telling them? To drop their what? Bad, old, negative values. And cling to good values that will lead you to heaven. Why not join the wagon of those who are going to heaven today? By His grace, I am on my way there. And it's only by His grace... That I know I will get there. It's not by my own power. I have no righteousness of my own. So also, you need the grace of God. God will lead you there. So I want us to bow our heads. Even as we pray at this moment. Talk to God. If you are there, you know that you are guilty of what? The Lord has just exposed to you today. Ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. Pray that the Lord God Almighty will have mercy upon you. You need to rededicate your life to Christ. Fine. Why not say, Lord, I rededicate my life to Christ. Are you in the wrong church? Because some of us are in the wrong church. You want to hear. The, the, the pastor, the minister is giving you what you want to hear. Not the word of God. Watch it very well. The message you have had or you had last Sunday. Is it scriptural? Or is it mass knowledge you went to the church to hear? Are there things you want to hear? Then you need to do what? Get rid of such assembly. And go and look for the assembly of the children of God. I'm telling you, it's for your own good anyway. It's for your own good. It's for your own good. Ask the Lord to have mercy upon you. And ask the Lord to direct you to the right location where you will go and hear words that will lead you to heaven 
and not the one that will make you twice children of Satan. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, ask Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. Today, I have realized that I'm a sinner. I have done all what they have counted for the past three weeks. I have been involved in them. All these terrible sins, Lord, please have mercy upon me. I acknowledge my sin. And I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Please purge me from every sin. Write my name in the book of life. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration for your word today. We pray, O Lord, that as many who have heard, and even myself, that you have used as a vessel, may we all not fall short of your glory. May we all not miss your kingdom. May we all get there by your grace. Your grace will not take it for granted. Help your children who have heard that they will also not take your grace for granted. Because one little mistake will lead one to hell. We don't want to go there, and we shall not go there. Heaven is our goal, and we shall get there by your grace, O God, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your word. We appreciate you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.